as quilters finishing a quilt is fantastic i do the happy dance and i run through the house showing off my finished quilt and i get all the appropriate oohs and ahs everyone knows how to indulge me and i'm good until the next quilt i'm leah louise from inspired quilting by leah louise and i'm not going to let a little allergy attack keep me from sharing this video with you I'm going to teach you how to do some circle quilting with your walking foot. You're going to be amazed at how easy this is. I'm going to show you how to do some practice beforehand to kind of get yourself in the groove of doing that circular quilting, and before you know it, you'll be finishing your own quilt. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a lot to show you, and please, I do hope you'll subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. I'm excited to share this with you. Thanks so much for being here. Now let's get started. I'm anxious to show this to you. I am so excited to have this quilt finish. I absolutely love it. This is my garden path pattern. It's a log cabin, a log cabin block, and you can see we have a large center. I start with a charm square and then work around the first round and the second round um, with a real wide strip and then a narrow strip, and it just, it just comes out great. I love the asymmetrical look of it, the way it lays out. I can really showcase some of my, you know, favorite fabrics that I like. This is the uh, Ali K Designs from uh, from Moda. Her patterns or her, her fabric is the designs and patterns are just wonderful. I love, love her fabrics. Of course, I'm a floral fan. So, you know, that that just attracts me anyways. And then the accent with the K facet sunflowers, I think works out really great. So I have got this quilt finished and I did a nine by nine or excuse me, um, nine blocks set up in a three by three. So it's basically a nine patch quilt. And I wasn't sure how I wanted to quilt it. It's just shy of 48 inches wide, so it's not a big quilt. It could be a fun one to hang up. It can be a fun one just to put over a chair or across a table, just to bring in some color. And so I thought, well, I want to, since this is so blockish, you know, so that's the thing with log cabins. Um, oftentimes, you know, they, they can appear very... I don't want to say square, but with very angular blocks. And I thought having a curved line would be fun. And doing a circle quilt design, a single quirk, I can't say it, a single circle on one quilt can be challenging if the quilt is large. And I thought, okay, this is right around four feet. So from the center out, that's only two feet. I should be able to manage that okay. And I started, and I, I really like how this turned out. Now, I also want to show you the back. Oh, my goodness. So I had extra yardage of this particular print, which I absolutely adore. I just want to get my markers out and start coloring it in. You know, it's like a giant coloring book. And then here are the sunflowers I use as the accent on front. And you can see how the curve quilting just looks so awesome. I love how it looks. Um, with the fabrics and going across the blocks we see it now this is the actual center of the quilt right about here but I wanted to start the center of the circle just a little bit off so here's my center and we're probably talking about five or six inches and I just took it closer to one corner um, simply to, you know, give it a little asymmetrical design in the quilting as well as the block. Now, it's, it's hard to see. I'm going to kind of show you the very center. Here's my center circle right there. So I start with the circle and I work my way around and around and around. And it's one continuous circle across the entire quilt. And so once I get to the corners up here, then I just finish it off. You can see that. Um, I get to this point and my circle, I can't hold it. Um, my circle can only go so far, but it comes around this way here. So then I need to come back and it's basically just like echo quilting, just filling in that corner in order to get um, that continuous quilted pattern going all the way to the edge. Now on the bottom, it was a bit different because I had my center of the circle moved up. So I had like big wide arcs across the bottom. 
And you can almost see that here. I'm going to get a picture of this um, that will show the quilting and you'll get a better sense of what it looks like. But so we've got the quilting. It comes from this direction. It comes around here and then it goes back up. So I get the same effect in this corner, but it's much bigger. There's a larger section that needs to be quilted with the uh, the curved lines. Now, the trick to this is not just a walking foot, but you want to be able to use your guide. These guides, my, my walking foot comes with two, one for this side and one for the other side. So I can use a guide for um, either direction. So if you're left or right-handed, or depending on how you sew, it's going to work. But let me show you up close. So as I'm sewing, my needle obviously comes right through here, right? So we line the presser foot, the walking foot, where the needle's going to go in the middle and the guide on the fabric. So as I'm sewing, the guide, I'm, I'm going along the line I previously sewed, and that's going to keep me straight so that I get uh, relatively even. It depends on, on uh, how how easily um, or how well you follow, let's put it that way. You know, you get a little bend here and there. Sometimes you're going to see a little flat spot. But overall, I am really, really happy. I do have to admit, I struggled initially with the the center circle because it's only one inch. And that's a really tight circle to sew without free motion. So I, I went ahead and I just took it one or two stitches at a time and turned the fabric. So here we are. I have a finished quilt. I am very excited about having this completed. And now I want to show you how to quilt this. And don't you love the border? Isn't that fun? I just think that tops it off great. And it looks wonderful in the back. And we've got this color, this strip of um, sunflowers goes from one side to the other. So it adds really a lot of um, a lot of great, great color. Oh, and here's something that I was really excited about. Check this out. I had to join two pieces, and how lucky that I had enough fabric that I could match my sunflowers up. So you don't even know that there's a seam right there. It's not perfect. I mean, you look up close and personal right here. You don't even know that there's a seam right there. You can, if you look up close, you can see it's it doesn't line up perfectly, but that's okay. No one's going to be that close. We just want to have the visual image of these lining up so that there's a circle and and the petals but right there there's that line you can hardly even tell there's a seam so that was wonderful I I really am glad I was able to work that out you don't always have enough fabric to do something like that and particularly with a large print like this um, it can be a challenge to have enough fabric because it takes so much to get from one length of the pattern to the next. Sometimes a pattern in a fabric's only eight inches before it repeats. Other times it can be up to 24 inches. And that means from this one to the next one is, you know, could be as much as 24 inches. So you need to have quite a bit of fabric if that's the case. I didn't bother to measure what the repeat is on this. Um, I just know that this worked for me and I was really happy with that. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I want to show you how to do some circle quilting. And, and it really is a, I don't want to say simple, easy. It can be challenging because it takes some concentration. You're going to have to slow yourself down and, and not rush through it. But once you get through those first couple couple rounds of your circle, you're just going to fall right into the mode. You're going to fall into your comfort zone that works for you, and then you'll have this finished in no time. This only took, oh, I don't, it was less than three hours to do all this. So that, that made me really happy. That went pretty quick, which is great for as close as the, uh, the quilting is, but it's a beauty. I'm real happy with it. So let's go ahead. I'm ready to get started and show you how to do the quilting. The first step to successful circle quilting is practice. And I have some fabric here and I have a old peanut butter jar that holds my safety pins that I've drawn a circle on. That's about three inches because you always want to start with a big circle 
when you're practicing because that's going to help you get the hang of what you're going to do. Then I have my walking foot in place and I'm going to attach um, my guide. And you generally get two of these with your walking foot, one for each side or maybe one that switches back and forth. Um, everybody has a little different something or other. But what I want to show you is you draw your initial circle and then this is going to be what we follow first. Then we're going to come around this way. And I'm going, I like about a quarter, um, an inch and a quarter. Sometimes an inch is a little too small, but for practicing an inch and a quarter is pretty good. So I'm going to set that right there. Now what I need to do is get a circle drawn from, or excuse me, a line drawn from the top of my circle here. And I want it to curve. So I need something bigger, which I don't have anything that big. So we're just going to kind of come in and, and do this. So we are going to come this way and we'll kind of meet in the middle. There we go. So you just kind of want to get a line like this. Now obviously you don't want to use an ink pen. I'm doing that because that's going to be the easiest to see. And this is going to be our starting point with our circle. We're going to come around this way. Then we're going to follow this line. And once we get here, we're going to set our guide so that everything we sew is going to be that distance apart. So let's go ahead and get started. I just want to get my my other glove on, get everything out of the way. Now, I I use old sheets and scraps of batting as as my practice piece. I just spray baste them because it's just so easy to deal with. I don't have to worry about pins. And then when I'm finished, I whoops, excuse me, I can just throw this away. Now, I'm going to start a little before this where this line joins up because I want my stitching to cross over that to lock it in place. So I'm going to go back just a little bit and I am going to lengthen my stitch. I lengthened my stitch to about a three. Usually I quilt with a 2.5 and so I'm just going to let that start itself and you just go slow. And you see I'm I'm not, whoops, I'm not, <laughs> my machine wanted to go on its own. I'm not turning it, I'm just letting the fabric slowly work its way around and I just place my hands on it and I'm, I'm just giving it just the slightest bit of a twist and go slow. And my machine is obviously set to do something funny today and I don't know what that is. Sorry about that, it just keeps going on its own. Um, so just follow that line and keep your fabric just going slowly. If you work at a slow pace, you're able to s turn this um, at the about the same rate so you don't get sharp angles and end up with like a hexagon, something that looks like a stop sign instead of a circle. Let's go ahead and just work around. So that's going to be the distance I'll sew around for each round in order to get a nice even spacing between all my rows. So I'm just taking it slow. If you need to, you know, just take a stop. But I wouldn't turn it while you're stopped because sometimes you tend to get a little bit of an abrupt turn that way. You'll get a jagged line. You're better to keep the fabric moving while the needle's moving. Don't move the fabric while the needle is still. And th because that's where I find I'm going to run into trouble. So if I stop my needle, I don't move the fabric, but this thread's kind of in my way. So I'm just going to cut that off. And just keep going. So I've seen where folks have done this where they take a stitch and they turn it, take a stitch and turn it. And if you start with a small circle, that is probably a really good way to go, which is why I start with a big circle on my practice. Because even though I've done this before, 
It helps to practice that center circle a few times before you start because that's going to probably be the most noticeable section. And, and I can tell you that because the first quilt that I did with a circle quilting pattern, I tried to free form, even though I marked it with a chalk pencil, I tried to free form it and I left this open like this big and, and it came out okay, but then I came back and I tried to do this um, freehand. Oh my goodness, it, it did not work well. And you know what? Look at that. I have the wrong piece in here. Give me just a moment. I'm going to put the correct one in. Well, as you can see, this guide works a lot better. I had this one on just, I guess I was using that the last time. But see how this has a, a round rod on the end and this just slips into the back of your presser foot. There's generally a spot where you can slide this in and I'll show you that after. Um, so when you get to this point you want to take your guide and just slide it to line it up with your circle right there like that. So as you're sewing, I want to put it right on the line, as you're sewing you're going to get that even spacing. So we're going to come here and as you sew you want to keep your eye on the guide, not the needle. Because if you're watching your needle, it's very easy to get off course. Stay with the, the previously sewn line and keep your guide either on it, next to it, whatever you do that works for you, just be consistent. And I just watch the guide complete, uh, you know, completely through the whole thing. I don't look at my needle. The needle's going to go where I direct the fabric. So I'm just, I'm holding onto the fabric so that it doesn't, you know, try and wiggle around on its own. And I am just giving it the gentlest turn. And so it's, it's easiest to start wide and big in the beginning and look at, this is, you can tell these sheets are really old. I'm getting pulls in the fabric. As I'm uh, as I'm stitching, but that's okay. This is practice. It's all going to get thrown away. So right here, this is the top of my circle, and now I'm just going to follow the line that we made. And when you get a little more confident with that, then go ahead and just pick up your speed a little bit. Don't get carried away initially. You want to make sure that you adjust to the speed that you're going, that you can keep that pace and, and stay in the, uh, in the circle. Now, I'm, I'm moving away. I'm not doing a very good job holding this. So I'm going to kind of let my circle become bigger here. And I'm just going to know that that now needs to be about, I don't know, not quite a quarter of an inch from the line. So it's actually almost easier to use a larger piece. Um, the smaller pieces can sometimes move on you more, just like that one kind of did on me. But that's okay. We'd, we're practicing. And the idea is you want to practice getting the fabric fed evenly and following the guide so that as you're sewing, you're staying in a circle. Now, there will be imperfections. The more you can sew steadily, the better your results will be because every time you stop, you're going to have a little bit of a, 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 maybe a jag or a notch or, you know, a flat spot, or at least that's what I've found. Um, but with, with practice, you can just get in the habit of stopping with your needle down and don't move anything as best you can. Now when you're working on a large quilt, you are going to have to move it. So that's why this practice is important because then you can figure out, okay, my needle's down and let's say, you know, I, I move things around. So I'm going to make sure my guide is in the right place, that they're parallel. I don't want to be going this way where, you know, I'm, I'm going to be sewing crooked. I want everything to be straight, and it's going to be straight with that spot where this guide, it has a curve. Let me get the other one for you. It has a curve where it rides on the fabric, and you want to line 
this stitching line with where this lines up with the fabric with the needle. So those three points you want a straight line and that's going to make sure that you're in the right place to start again. So let's I'm going to go ahead and mark that with my pen. Right there is where we sort of did our stop and turn. And that way we can see see how it went. So I'm just going to keep going. And again, as you get out to the edges where you have the loose pieces, um, it, it can get a little get a messy. Now see, I'm, I'm widening out a little bit there. I was pulling fabric and not looking at the, uh, at the needle. And let's see, this is going to be tough to get around there, but I just want to move over here and show you. And this is one of the things I have to watch for for myself, because I do have a tendency to get wider as I go around. And that's probably because I'm not paying as much attention to the needle and the guide as I should. So here we are. It's not too bad. Um, the spot here came out pretty even. I didn't get a jagged point, which is great. You can see on the back without the line, um, the circle, there's some threads there. The circle came around pretty good. There's a, a jagged spot or two over here. But I just want to make sure that where I overlapped, I stitched over the same line. Now, you are going to get sort of a funny little, um, what do I want to say, almost an elliptical line. It's not exactly a circle. It's a curve, but not in the same um, pattern, the, the same degree, because we're working our way out. Now, this is more pronounced because we're making a larger circle, a smaller circle you don't see so much. And that's what we're going to do next. Now, I'm going to take it down a, one size smaller. So I'm just going to use a spool of thread. And you can see, I don't know if I can get that out of the way, you can see that this spool will fit inside of that. It's about a half inch smaller all the way around. So I now if you're doing this at home, go ahead and and draw this on the same piece of fabric and just use a different color thread because then you can just quilt over the same circle because we're going to be using a different size and that way you can um, you know utilize your piece and, and not waste it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to sort of find the middle here and draw a line. Get my circle put in. There we go. And that's sort of right there. And somehow that, because I, I drew from the front and not the back. All right, I'm going to start this side. <laughs> and and uh, I'll get my first line in. And I want to get it a bit closer. Let's see, I did an inch and a quarter last time. So let's do, let's do about three quarters of an inch. That's usually a, a good way to go. Let's try that. And I'm going to come from here over. And again, if you have something round, that's going to make it uh, a, a smoother line. But again, for practice, this works fine. All right, let me go ahead and get started. Um, I'll show you where we are here in just a moment. With my circle drawn, I'm going to back up just behind where I am going to join up as I sew across. And this really is about the only place you're going to um, watch your needle versus the guide is this first initial circle. And I keep my hands flat because it helps me to guide more smoothly. And just go a few stitches. When you do a smaller one, you do have to go a little bit more slowly and figure out what works best for you to, to turn. So is it just take a couple stitches and give it a turn as you go. And you just have to do this carefully because you don't want to turn it too hard because you're going to get some jagged lines. So you just want to kind of keep things as smooth as possible. And 
generally once you start if you can slow your machine down a little bit and I I'll do that because I tend to you know have a have a lead foot not only sewing but driving so I have to be careful and uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll slow down my machine so if I'm pressing too hard on my presser foot um, it's not going to get away from me so here we go we just sort of slowly go around and I'm going to cut that thread. Just sort of gets in the way. There we go. And I'm going to work, whoops, you know, see that one? I, I didn't have my hand fully in control and I did a little waver there. But we'll take a look and we can really tell on the back side. And that's, you know, because we don't have the line all right, so now we're just going to follow this line. And we want to get out to that spot that's going to be our distance away from our circle so we know what, uh, what we're going to be doing. And at this point, we just press this in to meet up with our line. So that's going to ride right on my thread my stitching line. I'm just going to go a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take this and now I'm just going to slowly go around and keep my guide on that stitching line because now I'm watching the guide. I'm not watching my presser foot. I'm not watching my needle. And again, if you, you're having a little trouble and you're, you're kind of wavering a bit, just take a stitch or two and gently just ever so slightly move your fabric. Once, once you do this a bit, you can do it simultaneously. You can be stitching and moving your fabric at the same time, but that requires sewing slowly. If you sew, you know, quick, you're gonna have a hard time getting a good smooth curve in your stitching and so I'm just going to as we get bigger it's easier to speed it up but you want to make sure that your guide stays on that line because that's that's the measure that's what's going to give you nice even concentric circles that look pretty and Let's just go around here. We'll pick it up a little bit. And I think I had a flat spot there. And I guarantee if you look at any free hand circle quilting, there will be imperfections. There'll be flat spots. See right there. See right there. I mean, it's not, it's certainly not a big deal because I just sort of wavered a little bit, but I don't, I don't find that to be a problem, <laughs> quite honestly. And, and I'm sure you've heard me say this before. If someone's looking that closely at my stitching lines, well, you know, kudos to you for knowing what to look for. And now let me look at yours. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. You know, I don't, I don't worry about that kind of a thing. Um, to me, if, if I did the best job that I could and I'm happy with the results, that's what matters. I don't worry about what somebody else thinks or says. I mean, there are, there are too many, um, what do I want to say, folks that are maybe overly critical and and that's all right that's that's kind of where they're coming from and my guess is they're really critical of their own work which makes it difficult and uh i i like to return in kind and 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 compliment them on what they did because maybe they've not had a lot of compliments and and uh, a little kind word can go a long way so I just smile and think to myself, okay. <laughs> and, and I guess that's my attitude towards 
um, you know, doing this kind of work is I'm doing this for me and I love it. I don't expect perfection and I don't want you to expect perfection either. Okay, so this is kind of folded over and the basting is going to get in the way, but I can, I can keep working through. This will probably be my last round. But then on this one, actually, I'll show you how to do that corner. Um, how we can finish off on the corner. We'll get it back around to that spot. How's it looking? I'm, I'm watching my guide. I'm not, I'm not looking my, at my circle, at my stitching. I'm not looking at my needle. I'm just keeping my eye on the guide. And I'm hoping it's round. And not, you know, an elliptical egg shape or, you know, I don't want something that looks like a stop sign. All right, I think we're coming back up to that spot on the top. So I'm just going to sew right off. There we go. Let's take a look at this and see just how we did. All right, so there's the front. Like I said, for some reason, it just helps me look on the back. Um, hey, that came out pretty darn good. You know, this little bit I haven't quite perfected. I think what I need to do, and if you look at this, is maybe I need to take mine a little longer. Um, because, see, then I, I start getting this, like, egg point here. So, I'm instead of coming over and joining here, see, I need to come down... To this point so if this is your start point right here sorry am I not on the camera if this is your start point let's draw a, uh, a bullseye here it's hunting season so there's a lot of bullseye talk going on um, all right so right here you're going to want to draw your or mark your distance below this quarter because if you do it here, see how that you kind of get it long. So, so I'm learning this too. I usually go with that quarter line, but I'm going to take it down a little bit. And let me show you on the front. So here, where I mark this line, I'm going to do it here. And then look at what that does. That gives me a much nicer curve. So we're going to do that on the next one. All right. But first, I do want to show you how to finish off a corner. So let's say, let's do this corner here. Um, so we're, we're starting and we're coming around. I've got my guide in place. I'm watching where I'm going and we've got that. Okay, now chances are you're going to be working in a corner so you wouldn't have that whole area. And so then what you do is you just come around and you finish up here, do the same thing until you go off or come to the edge. And then we're going to do it one more time. And you just want to keep your guide in place in order to um, keep that curve the same distance and, and the same um, shape. All right, so this is this one. Now, the last one we're going to do will be a much smaller circle. And this is probably how you're going to do most of your quilts. You can get away with this easily, um, especially if it's a larger quilt. Um, this is fine, which, how big is that? Let me measure what that center circle is. So that's an inch and a half. So that's not bad. This is going to be, well, it actually measures one inch. So we're going to come in a little bit, and I think that's a good size, much smaller than that, and it's going to be pretty tough to sew. Okay, so we did some practice. We have this one. Let's take it down one more step and see how well we can do. Well, luckily I checked my bobbin because we would have run out at about the, the first circle or so. All right, I think that's about middle. So I'm going to just draw this little line. So this is about an inch. And I want to get a good line there so I can see it. OK, so if you remember, I'm going to actually draw my, 
what are these called? There's a name for this. Across something. I forget. I don't know. Whoops. Well, get your line somewhat straight. Okay. So if I come here and just come to this point, I don't give myself um, enough room to make a, what do I want to say, a nice curve. So I want to bring it out to here. Now, since this is a one inch circle, I'm thinking I want to quilt at about three quarters. Let me check that last one. Was that? Th yeah, that was three quarters. I think, hmm, should we try a half inch is too small. I'm just not a half inch kind of person. So I like the three quarters. And balance wise, I think it, it matches this circle. This being one inch, three quarters, I think will work well. So let's try this where I'm going to bring my curve around and I'm going to come around this way and see, you can tell that's a much smoother line than trying to bring it out here because it takes this out too straight too far. But by coming down that little bit, does that make sense? I think that's going to work. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll get started. Now, again, slowly, I'm actually going to slow my machine down. Um, let me find the speed. Here we go. Speed and slow it down. We're going to go to the side of the turtle. All right, I'm going to do that one more time. Okay, so we have our speed set. I can't push buttons when I have my gloves on, so I have to take them on and off all the time. All right, so let's start here. We're going to do our inner circle first. And again, if you're doing, um, actually on a quilt, you're going to want to pull your thread up and, and do all those things. This is a perfect time to use up old stuff. I use my old bobbins that are only half full that I just want to get rid of that thread. I use old sheets. I use scraps of batting. Um, I have an old needle in here. I mean, this is a, a perfect opportunity to use up that stuff um, because if I've used it, then I, I have a better, um, what do I want to say? Uh, I, I'm more likely to be able to throw it away. Otherwise, it's like, oh, I can use it for something. And this way, I'm using it for something. Now, I, I slowed my machine down. You can see how much slower it's sewing. And it's giving me the opportunity to get my fabric turned as I need to. My hands are moving a little more quickly than it was on the bigger circle. If it's easier for you, here, let me get rid of that thread. If it's easier for you, take a stitch and turn just a little bit, just the slightest bit. And it may get a little flat in one spot or two, but it's only that center circle that's going to give you grief. And this is where practice comes in because you need to get your eyes and hands and needle working together. And we're going to come up here. We're going to meet with our stitching. I can't, there it is, yep. We're going to cross over that stitching and we're going to come over to that extended line that's going to bring us out to our next round. And once you get into the bigger arcs, the bigger curves, it's, it does get a lot easier. It's that little tight center that can be the challenge. And that's probably the biggest area that you, you want to uh, practice. It's not a perfect circle, but you know what? It looks pretty darn good to me, and I am okay with that. So I want to line this up so that it's right on my, my thread line, my stitching line. And I'm going to continue going slow, watching my guide, not my needle. So keep your guide right on that circle. And, you know, continue sewing slowly. Kind of got a little off there, but when we go around, I'll show you. It really isn't that noticeable. You can be off a bit and get away with it but it really is just about practicing so you get that muscle memory going and you know just how to make the movements. There we go. All right, 
So, see, I still came out too far here, and I have a bit of a egg shape on the end. That's something I'm going to have to figure out. But see, that's only on that inner circle. And what I think it is, is I'm trying to get to a wider width too quickly. Because once I'm out here, we go fine. I can, I can stay on that line easily. We get a good curve going. And I think part of the problem is I'm doing it freehand, is if I have a uh, something with a larger curve, once I get out a little bit, we'll try that with that larger spool, and I bet that's going to give me a much better circle. You know, we think we can do something like that freehand, but circles and curves, it's hard to get pretty even when you're, uh, when you're just, you know, have a pen in hand and nothing to follow. All right, now I'm still on slow, but I've got my, my pressure foot down pretty well. See, I got to talking and I kind of got off my line a little bit. And I kind of worked my way slowly back because otherwise it'll be too abrupt. Go. And we just keep going round and round. So let me just get this finished. And we'll take a look at how we're doing. It's coming. Now see, y'all can look at that center. I haven't looked yet. I'm just keeping my eye on the guide to make sure I'm on that line. And the moment you look away, I guarantee if you're still sewing, you're going to have a flat spot or jagged edge. Now, I can sew right here, keep my needle down, and start again, and I'm fine. As long as I have my eye on it, and I know that I'm lined up. And I can have my needle down and, and do an adjustment. I want to look at that. You know, even though that does poke out a little bit, I think it works fine, because this curve worked out really well. So it's just that inner part, and I don't think think that um, we can completely eliminate that. I, I can't say that I, I see a lot of um, circle quilting in order to gauge, you know, my results to somebody else, but I'm kind of okay with that. I, I don't have a problem um, because we're, we're merging into a, another, um, another circle, into another size, and that is going to be an adjustment. So my recommendation is make that curve as long as you need to, this curve here, to keep it in close. And if that means that you need to, you know, come all the way down here, that's fine. There's no rule. There's no set um, parameters that, you know, ye must do this in order to be a circle quilter. Well, that's nonsense. So you do what works for you. You're going to find what you're comfortable with. You're going to find the best spacing um, that you can that you can maintain. Now, see, this is a pretty good good spacing for quilting. But on a large quilt, you can get away with even putting it out to that full inch. Um, this is three quarters of an inch. So let's put, move this out. So let's say we come out here is going to be about an inch. I moved my guide about a quarter inch from that line so that we can see what the difference is. And now you can tell my needle's dull. It's pulling on those threads. I thought this was a cotton sheet. There's obviously some polyester in there because it doesn't want to give under the needle. So, I'm going to come all the way around, and then I want to do a corner as well. We'll finish off this corner, I think. I'll find a corner that has the most batting. Alright, so I'm just going to stitch off here. And here, this corner has some good batting. We're about run off over there, so 
will come here. Now I was working at about a quarter inch, so I'm going to keep that same spacing for these outer circles. So we'll kind of do that. And that's all you do, um, is you just keep going and, you know, fill it in as far as you can. Now, I have a quilt that I'm going to be working on, and I'm going to show that um, soon. I don't know if it'll be in the same video. This is getting kind of long, but um, I'm thinking about rather than putting this in the center is kind of putting it off center um, by maybe a third of the way. So, you know, the corner over here will have the circle and then down here I'll just have the extended curve. So that's kind of a fun thing. So here we are. Okay, my concerns were this curve and I'm just going to elongate it. So again, we'll move that just a little bit. And instead of putting this here, if I put this here, so basically if this is 12 o'clock and this is six o'clock, do it at the opposite end. And see this way, I can get a much nicer curve than trying to do it this way. And I think that's going to make a huge difference. So that's good. We learned that. Um, trying to find where I, here we go. So this is where we change. So you can see when you change your curve, see how it's coming around and then you get just this little bulge in there. Um, but I did want to show you how nice a one inch um, quilting looks in the circular pattern. Um, I like the three quarters and again it depends on the size of your quilt, what your preferences are and what 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 works for you. What do you like? Do you like to go with the wider side? What are you able to do as far as maintaining your your distance? Those are all the things you need to learn and you're only going to learn that if you practice. So grab a piece and you know get a circle in there and just do it. Um, even if you just have a piece of of batting, just stick a piece of fabric on top and go for it. And don't fuss and worry that it has to be anything special or or fixed in a certain way. You just want to get some fabric so you can do a couple of these swirls and go over the same stitching. You know, you don't have to keep using a different piece. I just wanted it to be a good visual. And if we look at the back, see, if we do this, I think this is going to make a big difference. So if I start this curve and I kind of bring it up this way, it just gives us a longer transition period. This is just too short a distance to um, cut that curve off. So, okay, that's what we learned. And that's what we'll do um, when I do the quilt. Um, I have, a, it's a real pretty quilt, I'm excited. It's it's my uh, garden path pattern that I did with the Ellie K black and white fabrics and K facet accents. Oh, it's so pretty, can't wait to show you. So let me go ahead and um, get that one ready to go. We're gonna finish up with this right now. I think you have a good idea of how to practice doing your circle quilting. Again, start big, work small, get your initial line set up, give yourself plenty of distance, at least half the circle distance to uh, get a good good continuous curve that doesn't poke out too far or, or get elliptical versus circular. And if it's easier for you, get something round, whether it's a big button, let me see, what do I have here? Oh, this spool. You know, get something round that will kind of work in that distance. So let's say you're going to go from here to here. You want a circle that's going to be that distance. And look at that, I have a spool of thread that's exactly that size. So if I put that spool of thread here and I draw my line, look at that. See, that's almost exactly where we were. And I still was tending to go out too far, so just take it narrow. That's the way a, uh, the spirals work and don't don't try and make that turn too fast like I was doing. That was just coming out way too far. So now you know, if you see, you know, funny bits like this in your in your quilting that you tried to take too sharp a turn with too wide um, a circle. And we don't want to do that. We just want to keep it nice and slow 
and even around, and I think we have success. So I hope this is helpful. I really hope that you give this a try. It's a lot of fun, and you can see it really is easy. You just start with a large circle, work your way down, and you've got this. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's not going to be perfect, but look, none of it is. Um, you know, it wavers a bit. It's just the nature of the beast. And we're, we're doing something that is, what do I want to say, outside the box. But I love this. I enjoy this. I enjoy the hands-on. And I'm really excited with how this is working. And I hope you are too. I hope you're ready to give it a try. So let's go ahead and move forward. And you go ahead and get some... Uh, Get some quilting done. Get some circle quilting. I'm glad you're here today that we could work on this together and, and check out how this can uh, be easily practiced. And that's going to make the difference. So give it a try. I'm anxious to hear how you do. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Here's an up-close view of the finished quilting on the quilt that I did the circle quilting on. Um, this came out, I think, really sweet. You can tell right here is where the center of my circle is. Here is the center of the quilt, right about here. And so I went off center, oh, I don't know, I think it was five or six inches, and it's right around this daisy. It's hard to tell, but you can see the circle quilting, and then I fold it over the back a bit, too. I think it looks wonderful, and it looks great against a uh, log cabin block like this. But I want to show you the entire front and, and back as well. So let me get the next one for you. And here's the front. Um, here's the center of the circle. You can see it in the darker areas and sometimes in the light with the shadow. It's, it's hard to, uh, to actually get a good image of this from a distance, but I think it looks wonderful, and I love the binding. I think that's cute. Now let me show you the back. I think that really came out great. The quilting here can actually be seen a lot better, mostly because of the shadows against the white. Um, but it does. It came out wonderful. I'm really, really glad that I, I did it, and I've got this quilt finished. I've actually submitted it to be shown at QuiltCon in Atlanta in uh, February of 2023. So if it gets accepted, I'll let you know. Thanks so much for being here. I'm excited to share this quilt with you and share this technique, and I hope you're going to give it a try soon. It's a lot of fun. And like I said, practice, practice. Just do something small and keep doing it until you get it down, because then you'll have a perfect circular quilt, or at least as perfect as we can make it ourselves, right? And that's all that we want. All right, thanks again. It's great having you here. Have a terrific day, and please subscribe, and, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.